Hi there, so in this video we're going to be talking about transmembrane proteins. Uh, generally speaking, there are two types of proteins. We have the carrier proteins and the channel protein. But before we get to that, let's talk about what these are uh, initially. Transmembrane proteins, as their name suggests, are proteins that span the plasma membrane. If this were the, tra the plasma membrane right there, the transmembrane proteins are going to have access to the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid. So the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid, meaning outside of the cell. Not all of these proteins look like this, mind you. This one right here I drew was actually a channel protein, which will be the first one I talk about. So let's talk about the channel proteins. Generally speaking, these ones do not use any energy. They don't use ATP. And I guess I should have kept that example there. This would be a channel protein right here. It serves the purpose of allowing solutes to pass down their concentration gradient. So let's say we had a solute. Let's, uh, let's choose a random color here. So let's say we had a solute. Lots and lots and lots of the solute over here. It has a high concentration. This would allow this, this solute to go down its concentration gradient to the area of low concentration where there's barely any of the solutes. Maybe, maybe there's three of them here or something just for simplicity's sake. They would move down this channel protein. Now, why would they use the channel proteins? Well, because these solutes, generally speaking, are hydrophilic, meaning they're not able to pass just straight through the plasma membrane. Why? Because the plasma membrane has a hydrophobic center. So the purpose of channel proteins is to provide a hydrophilic pathway for the solutes to go through. Solutes can either be hydrophilic or hydrophobic. If they're hydrophilic, they generally are going to be using channel proteins to get in and out of the cell. Not all channel proteins like this are just open pathway. Some of them are gated, meaning I guess I kind of made a mess of things there. Some of them, though, have gates, meaning they're closed on either end. They only open when they're stimulated by something. So they can be stimulated by a number of things. Some of them specifically could be uh, from the cell itself opening up because it has a low concentration of something it needs, like calcium. So we can have gated channels as well. So some examples of channels we have are the sodium channels, we have the potassium channels, and we have aquaporins. Now aquaporins are the most numerous channels. Uh, they generally fill the surface area of a cell. They allow water to come in and out freely. Sodium potassium channels are very important for our neurosystem. It's how we send signals to our synapse and, you know, action potentials and such. So that's enough about channel proteins. Now let's talk about carrier proteins, which is the other type of transmembrane protein. So carrier proteins, unlike channel proteins, use ATP. So these carrier proteins are going to be using ATP, and they're not always, let's say, let's draw one here, they're not open on both sides at the same time. Sort of a, a terrible drawing here, but they're never open um, straight through like a channel protein would be. There's only ever one side open. And instead of allowing the solute to go down its concentration gradient, carrier transmembrane proteins are serving the purpose of moving the solute against its concentration gradient. So if we had a lot of a solute over here, let's say there was a high concentration of them here, and a very low amount over here, and let's say the cell wants more of this concentration, they want more of this red solute, using ATP, ATP is just going to come along, and it's going to phosphorylate this carrier protein, meaning it's going to add its phosphate group to this protein here, and that's going to cause the protein in this membrane to change its shape, and it's going to cause this ATP to lose one of its phosphates. So the changing of its shape is going to cause this end to close, and this end over here to open. So let me just kind of open that up a bit. It's going to open on this end, and uh, now that this end's open, it's going to have a high affinity for this red solute meaning it's going to want to bind to the red solute. So eventually one of them is going to bind over here, and the binding of the solute is going to cause another conformational change to the carrier protein, allowing it or transferring it to this other side. So this side here is going to close, and it's going to open on the side facing inside of the cell. Once it's open, the carrier protein is going to have a low affinity for the red solute on this side. This is going to cause the red solute to be released from this carrier protein. So suddenly we have more of the solute inside the cell using ATP. So this is generally how carrier proteins work. So I'm going to erase this just to free up some space. But I still want to talk about carrier proteins. So there are three types of carrier proteins. We have the uniport, we have the symport, and we have the antiport. So not all carrier proteins are what we call active meaning not all carrier proteins actually use ATP. 
Most of them do, some of them don't. In this example, Uniport, Uniports don't use ATP generally. So let's say right here is a Uniport carrier protein. What does it do? Well, it doesn't use ATP. Instead, it allows the solute to move down its concentration gradient, very similar or actually exactly the same purpose as a channel protein. The only difference is it's not open on both ends. Now with symports and antiports, they're very, very similar. They actually do use ATP. So let's, let's erase this uniport thing here. Let's pretend this is a symport. What, what does a symport do? So a symport actually uses the energy of another solute that's moving down its concentration gradient in order to move a different solute along in the same direction. So let's say we had a solute here. So this one, let's, let's put a high concentration up here and a very low concentration here. Now let's get a color for a different solute, a yellow one. So the yellow one is what we want. The yellow one, let's say this was a yellow symporter, we can call it, a yellow carrier protein that, that carries this solute through into the cell. So because this red solute wants to move down its concentration gradient into the cell, it's going to bind to this area here of this carrier protein, this symport, because it's a high affinity for that red solute. Now, because this red solute got uh, bounded to this, it's going to want, it's going to create a high affinity for this yellow solute to also get bounded to it. So once the, the yellow solute binds, then it's going to cause a conformational change in this symport to eventually let everything pass through and it's going to close on this end, and it's going to open up on this end right down here. And it's going to let both of those solutes, the red one and the yellow one, into the cell. And that's basically how symports work. Now, antiports work basically the same way, but they're moving in the opposite direction. That's literally the only difference between the symport and the antiport. So with antiports, the red solute is going to be binding to this area here of the antiport, or antiporter, and it's going to cause a high affinity for another solute let's say inside the cell this time, so it's gonna change the protein once this red solute binds there. The solute inside the cell is going to bind to this antiporter, and it's gonna be the same thing. Once, it's get, once it gets binded or bound to this antiporter, it's gonna cause another conformational change in the protein to allow this green one to exit the cell out here, and this red one to enter the cell, thus increasing the concentration slightly inside the cell and decreasing the concentration of this green solute inside the cell because it's moving outside of the cell, right? So that's the basics of the uniport, symport, and antiports. All of those are carrier proteins. So to review, these carrier proteins are never open on both ends at the same time, generally speaking. They sometimes, or I should say most of the time, use ATP, but in the case of like a uniport, it doesn't use ATP. And we're gonna be talking about some types of uniports and symports in a later video. Channel proteins can be gated and they cannot be gated. Generally speaking, they serve to just allow a hydrophilic channel for these, those hydrophilic solutes to enter and exit the cell. These are very important for maintaining some, some type of homeostasis during like uh, an, an action potential with uh, neurons and such. So I think that'll do it for this video. Stay tuned for part two. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos, uh, like the video to show your support. And that's basically it. Have yourself a nice day.